I now talk about cumulative distribution function and how to use it in quantitative trading. I have already explained what a cumulative distribution function is and how it is different from probability distribution function in my lectures on probability. So you must check that. So this I have taken from Wikipedia. So say this is normal distribution with mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So we have just plotted values from normal distribution here. and. Uh, First, I will give you a heuristic understanding of what it is and then we can see how to implement this in R. So to plot such a function, if you want to simulate and plot it, what you do is you basically take out values from the normal distribution. You take out values from normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So the function in R which does it is R norm 100, 0, 1. So you can adjust your mean here and variance here, whatever you want. So the idea is this, that once you have this 100 means, you're uh, drawing 100 values from R. So you have a vector of 100 values which are drawn from a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. So what you do is you arrange these values in ascending order. So this is the bottom 20 percentile, then 20 to 40 percentile, then 40 to 60, 60 to 80, then 80 to 100. You can do the same for anything. So here I'm doing for this normal distribution function. But you could possibly do it for stock prices. Say you have stock price of ABC Corporation. You can arrange that stock price for the last three months in ascending order. So say you had a thousand one values. So this is the stock price. Now you can arrange it in ascending order and then form buckets. And then you can get a cumulative distribution function. The beauty of it is that R will do it for you. Uh, for R purpose, I will feed in R a vector X of 100 values. And those 100 values would be drawn from a normal distribution. And then I'll, I will adjust some mean and variance. But instead of this, you could feed in your own values. So what is the purpose of this cumulative distribution function and how do we uh, use it for quantitative trading. So notice that the 90th percentile here is and 95 percentile is right here. So the probability that the stock will go above 2 is less than 5 percent. So it is less than 5 percent. Now that is the beauty of it. So uh, if our stock followed these values, uh, notice that there are negative values here also. I'm just uh, giving a hand waving example. So if the stock followed this distribution, that is you made a cumulative distribution function of ABC Corporation, then you know that in the past three months, so you just take three months of data, not last 20 years because underlying probability distribution might have shifted. So you are right here. So that means all the values, most of the values are less than 2. There are very few values which are above 2. So once you have this information, you know that the value above 2 is less than 5%. So uh, you can very confidently, what you can do is, you can sell a call option here. And if you're very confident, you just stop here. But most of the times, you want to mitigate our risk. So to mitigate your risk, what you do is, you also buy a call option at strike of 4. So you buy here and you sell here. So most likely you will make money. Uh, you sell a call, call option, it will sell at a higher price than buying because the strike price here is 2 and strike price here is 4. So this option is cheaper and this option is more expensive. So sell, you get money in, buy money goes out. So difference between these two, you make money and your probability of loss is less than 5%. So this is a good way to mitigate your risk and make some money. So with 95% probability, you will end up making money and you can make it uh, more tighter by choosing 1%. Now let us see the implementation in R. So you copy paste this code from the description of the video. Now I'm feeding in X in here. I'm feeding 100 values of a random normal variable with mean 500 and variance 10. 
instead of feeding this x values you can feed in your stock data which could be 1000 values or 5000 values or anything but i would advise you not to go last 20 years just focus on last three months or last 10 days uh, last 10 days is pretty good if you're going to bet tomorrow then last 10 days is a good history and this ecdf is what gives you cumulative distribution function and the summary just normal summary let us just run all this and we will see select it hit run button and the maximum value we got is 526 and the plot of f10 is right here this is the plot you got now you can see that you know this is say the stock price which you have observed so i fed in a random normal variable but suppose you fed in some other stock price and you see that the mean is 500 and this is the ascending order ascending bucket now you can see according to the past data the probability of stock going above 520 is pretty low or even above 510 is pretty low so what you can do is so say this value is 514 or something you sell a call option here so people will buy this call option because they have seen this price in the last 10 days and then on the other hand you buy a call option at a higher price just in case you know price actually shoots up and maybe you should keep uh, this call option at the expiry date at the right at the end of day or what you can do is you can use the distribution to uh, for binary option you can always bet that the price will not go above say 520 because the past 10 days of data is showing you that now do not try to take in 20 years of data because then that might make these extreme values uh, disappear you know if in the last 10 days the market is extremely volatile then uh, the past data will make these values hazy so try to focus on last 10 days and see what values you get there and then you compare those last 10 days with last three months and last six months and then you can form an informed judgment on uh, what to bet on so this is a very easy way of getting probability and this is uh, a standard way also because this is just frequency counting